Hello, student doctors. Let's talk about bile acid sequestrants, mechanism of action. They're used to reduce LDLC level. They're not absorbed, but they bind the bile acids in the intestine and prevent their reabsorption into the body. With respect to the enterohepatic circulation of bile acids, an average man produces around 0.5 grams of bile acids per day by synthesis in the liver from cholesterol and secretes around 0.5 grams a day. This daily turnover of bile acids accounts for 5% of the total bile acid pool size. Adult humans produce around 400 to 800 milliliters bile a day. That's just about a liter of bile that circulates through your GI system. So this bound complex, bile acids and bile acid sequestrants, is insoluble and excreted in feces. Decrease in bile acid pool size leads to an increase in hepatic synthesis of bile acids from cholesterol. I'll show you in the next slide why that's important. So depletion of cholesterol increases LDL receptor activity, thereby increasing removal of LDL cholesterol from the blood. There are two major bile acid biosynthetic pathways. The most important point is that the only way cholesterol can get out of the body is through its conversion to cholic acid and kenodeoxycholic acid. To summarize, there are two pathways for bile acid to get out of our body, but they both involve conversion of cholesterol to bile acid. So bile acid sequestrants are used to manage hypercholesterolemia. Cholecevalam, cholistopol, and cholestyramine. They're used in patients that don't typically respond well to dietary treatment. There's a second line treatment for pruritus, itchy skin, associated with cholestatic liver disease. These drugs are contraindicated in patients with this beta lipoproteinemia, which is a rare hyperlipidemia. It's also called HLP type 3. High levels of cholesterol and triglycerides are at very high risk of progressive atherosclerosis and premature cardiovascular disease. Bile acid sequestrants are also contraindicated in patients with hypertriglyceridemia-induced pancreatitis with decreased GI motility. These compounds can worsen constipation. Patients with bowel disease should not take bile acid sequestrants, diabetic gastroparesis. Patients at risk for bowel obstruction after bowel surgery should not take bile acid sequestrants. There are some GI side effects associated with bile acid sequestrants in up to 58% of patients, in fact. Cholecevalam appears to have less GI effects than cholestyramine and cholestipol. The predominant symptoms include constipation, dyspepsia, nausea, and elevated liver enzymes, but they're not typically clinically significant. Bile acid sequestrants can raise triglyceride levels up to 20% in some clinical trials. So lipid parameters need to be checked before therapy and periodically thereafter. Folks with triglyceride levels greater than 300 mg per deciliter should have more frequent monitoring. Patients with greater than 400 should not take bile acid sequestrants. Additional adverse effects include the production of vitamin deficiency. Fat-soluble vitamins are bound by bile acid sequestrants, including vitamins A, D, E, and K, as well as folic acid. Typically not clinically significant, and patients can take vitamin supplements while taking bile acid sequestrants. In patients with phenylketonuria taking the well-call suspension, each 3.75 gram packet contains 27 mg of phenylalanine, Patients with PKU should use caution. There are no black box warnings associated with bile acid sequestrants. These compounds are not metabolized because they're not absorbed and they have no systemic exposure. They're extremely safe and can be used in women not using contraception. Oral birth control is a steroid and bile acid sequestrants would bind to oral contraceptives. GI disturbances are common. They can aggravate hemorrhoids. The use of stool softeners or psyllium, soluble fiber, can increase patient compliant. Okay, student doctors, finishes up bile acid sequestrants.